Hello and welcome to Learning Enhancement Session 4 on Increases Mass in Chemical Reactions. Before we get started, can you please make sure you've got a pen, a paper, a pencil, a ruler and a rubber in front of you, something to write on, um, and you're in a quiet room that you do not get distracted by, and can you put any technology away, any mobile phones or any of our iPads or uh, utensils that may cause you to get distracted during this video. Okay. So, what we're going to know about is to explain increases in mass in chemical reactions. So, the previous session was decreasing in masses. This, this week's session is about increasing in masses, explaining that. So, on the retrieval, there are three questions. First question, number one, what will the mass be after 40 minutes? Number two, how do you know what the mass will be? And number three, what would happen if the balloon wasn't there? These three questions are relating to the diagram shown here. So, your first task is just to pause the video for three minutes and on your piece of paper, can you please answer those three questions in full sentences? So pause it, three minutes, now. Okay, you should have given yourself three minutes there, just go through these questions. And you pick up your pencil and we're going to go through this. Uh, just through now and I'm going to explain how we got to those conclusions. So number one, what will the mass be after 40 minutes? So the mass will stay the same at 76.4 grams because even though mass is being conserved it's also as a gas is being produced indicated by the balloons it is not being allowed to escape so the mass is not decreasing or increasing it is staying the same so it is 76.4 grams. Question two, how do you know what the mass will be? Simply because mass is conserved. Mass is conserved. Remember, mass is never created or destroyed. It is only just rearranged. Okay. And question three, what would happen if the balloon wasn't there? If the balloon wasn't there, this balloon wasn't there, or that balloon, the gas would be allowed to escape. And that means even though the mass is conserved, the, it would not be able to be uh, measured so mass would decrease because the gas has escaped. It could be, it's been conserved, but it cannot be uh, measured as a volume. Okay, so uh, for set success criteria for this for this video to develop the skills of explaining increasing mass and chemical reactions, we're going to describe how to make magnesium oxide with a risk assessment and a practical um, exercise to master this skill. We'll need to apply our knowledge of uh, conservation mass uh, through a quick check and then a true or false quiz at the end. Okay, so a uh, question on here, if if we were to make the compound magnesium oxide, as shown here, what we will need to make it and how will we make it? Can you pause the video for 30 seconds and just jot down or have a little think, a bit of thinking time here, how do you think we would make the compound magnesium oxide? Okay. So, should have given yourself 30 seconds there just to have a think or a little jot down a couple of ideas. So, how would we do that? First of all, we'd, use, we'd react to magnesium, solid, um, and with oxygen, and that would simply make magnesium oxide. So, there's a word equation for that, and how we do that is shown by the diagram below. So, we'd use a Bunsen burner to heat up and provide the oxygen as well to heat up a lump of magnesium in a crucible, which is a clay pot. Um, to heat it up and uh, form a white powdered substance that is magnesium oxide. A risk assessment shown just here, this little table, is what you would do in a before completing a practical in a in a science lab uh, to understand the health and safety aspects of that uh, practical you are about to undertake. So, for the example of reacting magnesium with oxygen to make magnesium oxide. Uh, you would complete this risk assessment to understand the safety behind it and understand why we take these safety precautions. So, uh, the first example just shown here, a hazard. A hazard is simply just uh, the, the equipment becoming hot, so something that can pose a danger. The risk is what it can do to yourself. So, uh, if equipment becomes hot, it can burn yourself. That is the risk. So, how it can damage yourself. 
and then a safety precaution is what you can do to minimize the risk of uh, that hazard so uh, the first example here the equipment becoming hot such as a crucible or the tripod or the uh, metal gauze uh, and that risk can burn yourself it becomes very hot it can burn yourself and your skin a safety precaution obviously always use tongues to move equipment move only when cool and appropriate to do so or if you do uh, burn skin to rinse it under cool water so can you draw this table in with pencil and a ruler and then copy in this hazard example and then give yourself another three minutes to write in your own hazard risk and safety precaution using this scientific drawing to the right to assist you so give yourself five minutes to complete that task and then we'll resume with the video five minutes from now go okay should have given yourself there uh, about five minutes just to complete that we're going to go through this now you may have something different but if it still is a hazard risk or uh, safety precaution tick it off in uh, a pencil okay so uh, another example of a hazard would be a crucible the crucible the porcelain crucible the clay pot getting dropped on the floor or on on the table the risk it can be broken into pieces that can cut skin or possibly because it's hot and been heated up burn skin and the safety precaution for this would be to clear with dustpan and brush but only by the teacher or unless instructed to or if possibly burnt to rinse burnt skin under cool water again just like before your next task is to have a go at these five questions on uh, the screen here using what we've just done there and the word equation we've written down just previously can you have a go at these five questions and give yourself five minutes pause the video and have a go now now you should give yourself five minutes to complete those can you please pick up a pencil or another colored pen and we'll go through these five questions now so the first question question three uh, what elements are the reactants what did you start with those are the one the reactants that become before the arrow to show a chemical reaction is taking place so that is magnesium and oxygen magnesium and oxygen they become before the arrow they are the reactants what react together that means the product the name of the product is just one what you have made is magnesium oxide and as a word equation that should make magnesium plus oxygen arrow to show chemical reaction has taken place magnesium oxide so the reactants here reacting together as a chemical reaction forming magnesium oxide okay as a simple equation you could have used a periodic table for this it will be 2mg plus O2 makes 2MgO oxygen always goes around as a pair it's a diatomic uh, so that means there's two always goes around in two we have to put two in front of the mg mgo here and two in front of the mg just there and did you make an element compound a mixture how do you know so the product that was produced was a compound is a compound magnesium oxide here because the elements are bonded together and can't easily be separated you cannot easily separate the mg here from the o because they are bonded together Give yourself a mark out of five for that. Okay, so question eight, the last question. During this reaction, the mass increases from 1.6 grams to 1.9. Explain why the mass has changed. During what we've done in the last this session and the last session, why do you think the mass has increased? So it's increased. Pause the video for 30 seconds and then we'll go through it in green pen. Please write down a piece of paper or jot down any ideas you may think. Have you had a go at that? We're going to go through this now, explaining why the mass has increased, why it's increased from 1.6 grams to 1.9 grams. So, as magnesium oxide was being produced, the oxygen has been added to the magnesium. 
but the oxygen has came from the atmosphere that means it's the air around the magnesium in, and that was in a gaseous state so it could not be weighed as that because you cannot measure gases uh, because it's in a gaseous state but when it turns into a solid it can be weighed so you can notice the difference from 1.6 grams to 1.9 grams meaning before the reaction there was 0.3 grams of oxygen around the magnesium around it surrounding it but then when they reacted together the oxygen was converted into an oxide as a solid and it could be now be weighed so your next task and you will need to pause the video for this once again for two minutes when magnesium burns it reacts with oxygen to, be, to produce magnesium oxide indicated by two magnesium uh, atoms here the oxygen molecules here can you finish off the diagram by showing two bonded magnesium oxides here? Pause this video for two minutes and can you draw in and complete this, this here? So your two minutes are up, you should have uh, drawn those in uh, and completed that. So hopefully, hopefully you should have got something just like these. So two MGOs just like there so you got one here magnesium oxide here and because in a balanced symbol equation balanced symbol equation uh, there's two of them so you got another one below because the mass is always conserved there's two magnesiums here there's two here there's two oxygens here there's two oxygens here remember mass is always conserved but it does increase or decrease if it can be measured so this will be your second to last task. Just a quick check before we get onto the plenary. It should be true or false questions. So question one, when carbon burns, it combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Very similar to uh, magnesium and oxide to form magnesium oxide. The diagram below shows some carbon atoms reacting with the oxygen molecules. So got four carbon atoms here and eight oxygen uh, atoms there. Can you complete the diagram here, just like before with the magnesium oxide diagrams? Can you complete that? And then, that's, that's question A. For question B, can you just react, write the reactants and products on the correct line here? So which one's reactants, which one's products? And then question C, 12 grams of carbon reacted with 32 grams of oxygen. What mass of carbon dioxide was formed? And you just need to circle or just write down the correct answer. So can you pause the video for three minutes and have a go at those three questions there, A, B and C. Okay, should give yourself uh, three minutes, just go through it. in another pencil or another coloured pen. Can you please tick them off and give yourself a mark out of three as we are going through it. So the first question A, you should have had one, another molecule there, two carbon dioxide compounds there and a third one there because there's four carbons here now four carbons there eight oxygens there and eight oxygens in there reactants always go on the left hand side before the arrow and products go on the right hand side there shown like that remember reactants will react together products are what's produced and then 12 grams of carbon and 32 grams of oxygen it should make 42, 44 grams, apologies, 44 grams, because you're just simply adding them together because mass is always conserved. Okay, so moving on to the plenary, the final task, true or false, we'll have to, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six statements. Can you please write each of these statements down and then write next to it whether they are true or false, and this will be the final task of plenary. Can you give yourself six minutes for this to write down in your books or in your on your pieces of paper whether they are true or false? So we're quickly going to go through this as true or false on the final plenary. So uh, for each of these, give yourself a mark out of six in another colored pen. So the first statement was true. Second one is false because a compound being formed compound being formed there, magnesium oxide. The third one is false as well, because it's not balanced, it should be 2Mg and 2MgO. Uh, fourth one is true, fifth one is true, and the last one is false. 
it is always conserved. Give yourself a mark out of six for that, and well done if you got all six. If not, better luck next time.